Now that we've installed and enabled all of the modules we're going to be using on our Drupal 6 site, let's go ahead and set up the structure of our content types and taxonomy. We're going to go to Content Management, Content Types, and in Drupal 6, Story basically means articles. We'll click on Story. We could use this and edit it to be called articles and then add our fields. But just to make sure that we're all on the same page and we don't miss anything following along with this video, let's go ahead and delete the story content type. We're left with page and panel. Now we're going to add a content type called article. And here, we'll just type article, all lowercase. We won't worry about the description, submission form settings. All of this is fine. Workflow settings. Usually, if I'm working with the real site, I like to leave published unchecked. So I explicitly have to tell Drupal when I want one of my articles published. But for the sake of this tutorial, it'll help speed things along a little bit if we leave this checked. So we're going to leave these options the same. And for comment settings, go ahead and make sure those are set to read write. Everything else here should be just fine. So we're going to save this content type. Now let's go to manage fields. The first field we're going to add is image. We'll call this field image for the machine readable term. And we're going to select our content type. And that is going to be file. And then image under the operations column. Before we click save, let's go ahead and drag this right above body. That means as we're creating articles, we'll see the image upload field before we see the body. And we'll save. We can leave these settings just as they are, because once again, this is not a real site we're creating. Normally we would want to set some sort of restriction for minimum and maximum sizes, as well as the actual file size. But for our purposes, we'll just leave this as it is because we're not going to be creating much content anyway. We'll save our field settings. And that's all we're going to do with this piece of content for now. Quickly, we'll look at display fields. We're going to hide the label for the image and save that. And then we're done with this content type. Let's go to create another content type. We'll go to content types, add content type. We'll call this one event. This will give us a good content type to test out the date field with. We'll do event in all lowercase for the type. And we'll, we'll say simply use this content type to add events to our event page. Everything else should be just fine. We'll save this content type. We're going to go to manage the fields. We're going to add a new field, which is date. We'll call this field date. And under select a field type, we will use date, which we have now that we've installed the date module. This will be a text field with custom input format. Let's put this also right above the body as we did with the previous content type. We'll leave the default value blank. This default value is fine as it is as well. For the input format, we want to keep this fairly simple, but let's use the hyphens rather than the slashes. And we're not going to worry about a custom input format, although Normally, you would want to use this on a real site. Let's go ahead and make this required so we don't accidentally leave it out as we're going through the tutorial. 
We'll say the to date is optional. In other words, we can have an event that runs over a number of days, one date to another. We'll leave everything selected on granularity. Default display medium is just fine, and we'll use the site's time zone. Let's add one more field to this content type. We'll call this one location. Call it field location. This is going to be a simple text field, and it's going to be, once again, a text field as opposed to a text area or some sort of select list. Let's put this between body and date and save. The size of the text field is fine. We'll make this required, once again, so that we don't forget to add this field as we're going through the tutorial. Plain text is good. We'll save these settings. Let's look at our display fields. And all of this should be fine. Let's create one more type of content. Content management, content types, add content type. And this is going to be event preview. For the type, let's simply call it preview, all lowercase. For the description, let's put use this content type to post subjective previews of upcoming events. This will be similar to an article, but we're going to tie these directly to individual events on the site. We'll save this content type as well. And for event preview, we're going to manage fields. And the only field we're going to add to this content type is event. This is the field that's going to point to the actual event node on the website. So this will be a preview with a link to the actual event information. So we'll call this event, field event, all lowercase, and select field type. This is going to be a node reference field. And select list will be fine. A lot of times you may want to use autocomplete. Checkboxes, radio buttons may be appropriate in some circumstances. For us, select list is going to be best. And you can see I'm a fan of putting some of these fields right above body. I'm going to do the same here. Let's go ahead and require this field. And we're going to say that only events can be referenced. Of course, if we're, if we're using this field explicitly to link to events, that's all we want to have available in this node reference select list. On this view used to select the nodes, we can leave this as is. Don't worry about changing anything here. We'll save field settings. Now, let's work with our taxonomy. We're going to add one vocabulary, and it's going to be called category. For the description, we'll say, this vocabulary is used to categorize articles. And this is going to be available specifically to the article content type. We're going to make this a multiple select field when it shows up on our nodes. We won't worry about requiring it. Let's save. Now let's add a couple terms very quickly. For the first term, we'll use opinion. This will be for opinion-based articles, of course. And for the next, let's go with interview. Now we have all of the content types that our site's going to use, as well as a custom taxonomy vocabulary that we'll also use on our site. 